Hello friends, Dapper Drabby here and welcome back to the PokeTuber Battle League and I just realized I don't think I have a image of the uh, of the league on here. Um, I guess I forgot to do that. But it is the PokeTuber Battle League. You'll know these from some videos I did a while ago uh, where I was king. I was not king for a long time but I'm ready to attempt to get that crown back against the same deck I lost against. He ran through the entire field. He's back on me. Now, so that is a triple little baby buzzhole deck. So, of course, I'm playing Malamar. Um, this is not the Malamar build I really wanted to play, but it is the one that directly counters his. And that's really what I want to do, because if he beats me, you know, he wins. He wins the season one. Um, and I don't want to let that happen. So we're playing Shining Lugia that got 30th at NAIC. A direct counter to his Baby Buzz deck. Um, so at least I'll get one win out of it. But we'll see if I get countered in the next round. But we're going to go ahead and challenge PK. I hope he's ready. Um, I assume he is. But what would I know? Um, I said I would put everything in Psychic. There we go. So I'll go to the front. And it is the... Make sure we grab the right one. I think I went too far. Why can't I find it? It is... Shining Lugia NIC. There it is! I was hoping to play some Malamar uh, Noivern, to be honest. And... I just didn't get enough practice with it. Didn't get enough uh, to feel super comfortable with it. I do like the deck. But I just wasn't sure that I would definitely win with it. And that's really why I chose ultimately not to play it. So, we're going to flip the coin. We're going to pick Tails. We lost the coin flip. I hope that doesn't set precedence for the entire match. But we shall see. I do have this on a little bit of a an, uh, uh, lift it up today. Oh, of course. Of course. We get the Lele start. Of all things to start... It is Battle Lele time. Battle Lele. We are ready, though. We are ready for this. Battle Lele. Um, unfortunately, I think we're going second. So if he ends us, we are kind of screwed. We double Battle Lele. We double Battle Lele. So we're going to grab not not three. <laughs> not three Malamars, sorry. Not three Malamars. Um, I'm actually wondering, do I want to grab the Shining Lugia or the... I think because it can attack right away, I'm going to grab the Mewtwo GX. I feel like that's the right choice. And then we can grab a... Yeah, we got we got stuff we can do next turn. So for this turn, since we're not attacking, we'll just throw that down. And we have options for next turn. Go ahead, PK. Uh, let's see what kind of buzzhole action is coming out today. I'm kind of disappointed with myself. I feel like I sold out by playing Malamar to counter Buzzle. But it's... I mean, I was... I had three Malamar decks I was deciding between. And this one really is just the most consistent because it's well thought out of. And did really well at a big tournament. Um, like, I think his list is the first place list from Madison. So it's, it's we're basically... We're net decking. We're, we're getting... We're taking... Uh, decks from big tournaments that we don't know how to play and playing against each other but you know I think we're both getting better by doing so and I mean I I believe I understand the concept of Malamar I have a Malamar deck that I play it's a Malamar tri Necrozma so it has a couple different Necrozma options in it and they don't get he does not get very much here uh, we can toss this uh, energy and grab a Malamar and just start trying to get set up here. We'll probably evolve this. Go ahead and Psychic Recharge onto the Mewtwo. And I think we're just going to try to two-shot this Regirock here. Um, <laughs> choose one of their bench Pokemon. There's only one bench Pokemon. But okay. Yeah, we're just going to try to two-shot this Regi see what we can do to get started in this game 
He's not found anything so far though, so I guess I would have been fine playing Noivern. Because I feel like Noivern has a better chance against the field. Like this one is going to be easily countered. The moment, the moment if I win, uh, the deck list is posted already. So like they'll just look at it and say, you know what, counters this, this counters this. And I'll just be countered. This is a rough start. He's probably looking at his hand like, uh, first dead hand in five matches. Um, cause he's, I think he's went through like several people. We had six people in the room. I think we dropped one. So he went through four people here to get to this point. Lele. Lele on Lele action. And we top deck a Sycamore. That means we, we have to use it because we use it or lose it. And we just Sycamore because we have nothing else we can do with that. And we get the Float Stone on this. So we can go ahead and start wrecking a little bit. We can actually grab another Malamar here too. We can grab another Malamar, get that set up. This is exactly what he doesn't want to see. Ooh, but there's a fun play we can play now. Uh, we can actually get three energies on Shining Lugia and put that up here because the Wonder Tag ability allows Shining Lugia to do more damage than the uh, Mewtwo right now. So we will go ahead and split these. I assume he thinks I'm hitting everything I need. Not quite hitting everything I need, but I'm hitting enough to put a lot of pressure on him. So this thing is going to do 100 damage back to me, I believe. It'd have to get two energies on it to be able to one-shot Lugia back. Because of that 130 HP, Shining Lugia is a great card in this list. That Argent Wing does 120 to a Pokemon with an ability that is mainly to go against, you know, your Zoroarks. And then, of course, Lele and uh, Regirock back there as well. And then Arrow Force is really useful to hit the perfect number on the Baby Buzzhole. Uh, as well as it discards a Psychic Energy, which you can get back with Malamar the following turn. So that's what ended up making... Uh, I can't remember the player's name off the top of my head. I could look it up pretty easily I guess so I should probably do that um, I probably even have it saved on my phone because I was looking at the list for a long time oh, right after and I see thinking like oh wow this is a good deck let me see how I like it um, I did try it out before I just did a little bit more testing of it last night uh, let me see not patreon it is on limitless and uh Let's just go over towards this because I, I don't need to go over that one anymore. I know what that one looks like. Because you know, there's a lot of people who play it on the TCGO. But uh, he's kind of stuck here. He doesn't... I'm not sure he knows what to do or how he's going to come out of this. Uh, I'm in the lead despite the prizes being the same. I'll, I'll say it that way. Um, because... I don't know, he can come back. He, he does have a comeback option, and that is, uh, you know, that that buzz hole right there. He has the energy on him. If uh, if I knock this out, he can come back and knock me out. Um, maybe. Yeah, he has he has the right energy on it to be able to get the knockout. This guy, this uh, deck was made by Nick uh, Cap Capo Bianco. B yeah, Capo Bianco. Um, and he got 30th place uh, with this at NAIC uh, tournament with fifth with uh, 1,534 masters in it so 30th out of 1,500 people that's pretty significant that baby buzz is gonna smack me in the face oh it's gonna smack me in the face this turn that's a little surprising because that kind of puts him in like a really bad place here we can even Oh, I thought I played Marsh Shadow. I don't play Marsh Shadow. Or he's prized. I think the Marsh Shadow's prized. That's fine. Didn't really want anything. And I'm definitely not going to give him a fresh hand. So we're just going to arrow for us here. 
I guess he thought he like had to smack me. But that just didn't go very well for him because that allows me to take one prize. I'm taking a second prize next turn with one of these guys. Probably take out the, the Lele, I guess. Because it has energy on it. Well, energy and it's a pivot. I'm actually surprised he threw out the Yancey. When Lele is kind of his pivot right now. You'd think he'd want to pivot into the Lele and then uh, come back into the DNC if he has to sacrifice something. But he's already deciding to sacrifice the DNC because he knows Shining Lugia will one-shot it. Ooh, but now I have another play. Maybe. Oh, they had the Guzma. That's what he was playing. This doesn't do a lot to it, though. Okay. And we get another one of those. So we can literally just Guzma for days right now. Um, we have only one energy in here, right? Yeah, we only have one energy down there. So here I can Guzma. I can bring out the Buzz Hole. I can load up this guy and uh, take it out. Because it's uh, 30, 60, 90, 120. Yeah, I can take out his main attacker here. Which, there's no reason not to. To be perfectly honest, there's not really a reason not to do this play right here. Because nothing else except Lele can attack me. And I'm fine with that. We get that Malamar recharge on here. But Lugia can literally clean up after this. Lugia gets the cleanup after this, so all we gotta do is full burst, do 240, because we're doing 120, and we take away um, Baby Buzz, but he still has Beast Ring. If he can find, if he can find uh, his Buzz Hole and Beast Ring, he can still get back in this game. But he goes for the Rock Rough. Interesting. I'm fine with that. We will take this out with Lugia. Since we already... Since it's already up here. And I'm probably going to rescue stretcher that. And just start loading it back up. Seems like the best option here. Literally get a fresh Mewtwo here. So that has the option to GX and literally take out anything at once. And I can even like just do more here. Get rid of those two things. And I could end them down to four but that doesn't do much for either one of us. I'm going to keep what I have in case I need to goose my next turn. That's really the best option. I don't really need anything. Because the Malamars are kind of taking care of it. Um, I'm taking these prizes in such weird order. There's a Fighting Fury Belt. That's a useful card. That puts our Shining Lugia up to 170. Now, now he only has 70 HP. And there's not much PK can do with this. This is kind of where I wish these games were best 2 out of 3. But they're just it's the king of the hill. So, you know, PK is on top of the hill. I'm coming in with Shining Lugia and saying, no, that's my hill. Here's a, a Lycanroc, which I'm fine with. We do have to figure out a way to retreat that, though. Hmm. If I top deck a Guzma, it's just the cards were in my favor, but it could be just like draw gods right there. This might be a good play for him. Looks like it was. I'm going to have to Cynthia and hope I find something. I thought he was going to take out the Lugia some way, somehow. But he didn't. But look at that play right there. Literally Cynthia to the top deck. For the game. <laughs> and 
and we just be darting. Okay, so there we go. There we go. I'm back to having the crown. I don't have one on me, of course, but crown is firmly placed back on my head, and I will be looking out for my next match. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. But yeah, this was that triple baby buzz list that wrecked in Madison. And he looks like he's been blinging it out because it's been winning for him. It's just been winning for him. Um, I mean, I feel bad. I'm actually really surprised no one else has just literally brought a counter deck to this by this point. But uh, that weakness, it's really hard to overcome with Buzzhole. And he just he got a slow start. And there's not much he could do about it. So with that, guys, I want to thank everybody so much for stopping by. This has been Dapper Drabby. I'll bid you guys Alola. Thank you so much for coming, and I'll see you guys in the next video.